everyone welcome to audit academy today we are going to discuss about the government of india act 1935 as we told you that we are going to make conceptual videos on different subjects like history geography economics politics and scientific and this class is part of that program so today our discussion on uh, government of india act 1935 one of the most important legislation of the british government in india and uh, this is a conceptual video on modern history so that is going to be our today's topic the government of india act 1935 as you can see here so i will start the discussing on government of india act but before that we will try to understand the background but background very briefly whenever you will go through any topic whatever it may be and uh, irrespective of any subject so first start with the background so here we will see the background of government of india act but very briefly so let's start the background of government of india act see the most important year here is 1930 what happened the 6th april of 1930 civil disobedience movement was launched gandhi went to dandi on the 6th april of 1930 and he broke the salt laws and that's how the civil disobedience movement was started and during 1931 when civil disobedience movement was at its peak at that time gandhi arvin pact gandhi arvin pact took place Okay, in the year 1931, all you know. And in accordance with, it, with this Gandhi Arvind Pact, what was decided? That temporarily Gandhi would withdraw the civil disobedience movement and Gandhi would go to London to join the second roundtable conference to decide the future of India. So, as per the decision of the Gandhi Arvind Pact, Gandhi withdrew the civil disobedience movement temporarily and Gandhi finally went to London to take part in the second roundtable conference with a lot of optimism, okay, with a lot of hopes. So finally, in the second roundtable conference took place in the year 1931. And in the second roundtable conference, you know, there was, it, it was completely a digester. Okay, no demand of Indian National Congress was fulfilled and Gandhi came back in India with empty hand. But Gandhi got, all you know, communal award. Okay, communal award. What was that? Okay, Congress went in the second round of the conference with a lot of optimism and in place they got communal award. Communal award means separate electorate for the depressed class. So one second British was trying to divide our country internally into different segments. And according to Gandhi, this communal award, which was declared by Ramsey MacDonald, was an attack on the unity of India. So finally, Gandhi came back in India with empty hand on 28th of December. 1931 and on the very next day 29th of december 1931 congress working committee meeting was convened and in accordance with this meeting the decision was taken to launch the civil disobedience movement once again and that's how the second phase of civil disobedience movement was started but this time the policy of the british government the attitude of the british government and then viceroy lord wellington because viceroy was already changed before that, Viceroy was Lord Arvin, already you have seen. So new Viceroy, Lord Wellington, his attitude was completely different. From the very beginning of the civil disobedience movement, or the second phase of the civil disobedience movement, which was started in the year 1932, the Viceroy of India at that time, Lord Wellington, he took the decision that Britishers, this time, they would not allow Congress to build the temple. Okay? Is bar Congress could uh, Congress ka jo tempo build karna, okay, or ye, ye jo mass movement karna. This time we would not allow this. So from the very beginning, government took a different policy. What was the policy? Government started arresting all the Congress leaders, general Congress members, Congress volunteers, even the sympathizer of Indian National Congress and civil disobedience movement. And that's how all the leaders, all the members were arrested. And obviously, British government started suppressing this movement very ruthlessly. And finally. With this policy of the British government, Gandhi was compelled to withdraw the civil disobedience movement in the year 1934 and that's how the civil disobedience movement was ended. Okay, British government was successful to suppress the movement, so clap for British government. But they were worried. After suppressing the movement, they were worried. Why they were worried? This gentleman, say this gentleman, what was his name? At that time he was the Viceroy of India, Lord Wellington. He was actually, you know, worried. Yes, 
you were successful to suppress the movement but suppressing movement or suppressing the movement successfully it's a very short term tactics now in future there could be a resurgence of another movement which could be more powerful so what could have been done kya kar sakte hain hum so that's how this vice roy started thinking and the government started thinking that what could be our future strategy we have to weaken all these kinds of movement all these shorts of movement permanently so what could be the strategy to weaken the movement permanently that's how this lord wellington and all these britishers you know british government they started thinking and their aim as you can see here aim to permanently weaken the movement and how could it be achieved it could be achieved if they can divide congress internally okay they can divide congress internally can you remember when congress was internally divided last time yes after the non cooperation when one part of the you know after the non cooperation movement what happened when this non cooperation movement was withdrawn in 1922 after the event of chauri chaura on the 5th february of 1922 after that all you know that congress was divided internally one part of the congress they actually was in favor of the gandhian style of movement that is they were in favor of the constructive work constructive work and the other part of indian national congress led by motilal nehru and chitranjan das all you know they were in favor of the council entry okay to take entry into the legislature and they formed swaraj party all we know and right? so basically here government once again started playing the same card they started thinking so that was the time when congress was internally divided even they can remember this incident of shurat split which took place in 1907 okay so here british government started playing the same game they thought that if we could we if we uh, come with some new laws and if we can engage a large segment of indian national congress with the colonial constitutional and administrative structure in that case congress would internally divide it how because one portion they would not agree to take entry into the councils and other part of the congress they would be agree to take entry into the council so basically here the british government's policy was to divide congress internally to weaken the movement permanently and basically to integrate one segment of the congress with colonial constitutional and administrative structure isko mantri bana do minister bana do isko government office pe ghusa do so that was basically the policy of the britishers when they will become minister they will accept the government office they would not start any kind of movement even the moderates and liberals who were the part of the congress they were always in favor of the constitutional path so that's how they brought a new law that is 1935 government of india act that was one of the reason but at the same time there was a uh, you know con consistent demand or constant demand from the indian nationalist for the constitutional reforms all you know that last time in the 1919 the government of india act came that was also known as montagu james bond act after that simon commission was appointed all you know after that simon commission was appointed and simon commission came in india in the year 1928 and on the basis of the report of the simon commission so three four important things here you can note down on the basis of simon commission report simon commission report first important thing is the report of simon commission second the recommendation of the round table conferences already three round table confer conferences had taken place in britain in london so recommendation of rtc matlab round table conferences and finally the joint select committee the recommendation of the joint select committee this government of india act 1935 was made clear so what are the sources behind the government of india act 1935 the report of the simon commission the recommendation of this three round table conference first round table conference second round table conference and obviously the third round table conference even after the third round table conference in the year 1933 british government published white paper that is also a source white paper okay and the recommendation of the joint select committee so all these were the sources of the government of india act 1935 now let's start and basically uh, congress was internally divided after the withdrawal of the civil disobedience movement 
one part of the Congress. That's the eternal debate of Indian National Congress, I personally feel. So after 1934, after the withdrawal of the civil disobedience movement, Congress was divided into two segments. One second, like after the withdrawal of non-cooperation movement, one segment of Congress, they started arguing that they would go for the constructive work like mass education, like women empowerment, like removal of untouchability, like unity among the Hindu and Muslim. Very briefly, I want to tell you one thing. You know, this is Gandhian style. What is Gandhian style? Uh, let me tell you the Gandhian style of movement. It's like, what from the science background, it's like a sine curve, okay? You know sine curve? That's the starting point of the movement. Just look at, look at here. That's the starting point of movement. Suppose this is the starting point of the civil disobedience movement. Now movement will be started. Now movement, movement will go to its peak and finally movement will come to an end. After the end of the movement, what the, you know, uh, the participant of the movements or what the nationalist leader will do after the completion of the movement, they will not just go to home and will start sleeping. They will, instead, they will start the constructive work. Constructive work means preparing the country for the next phase of the movement or preparing the country for the betterment of the country. Okay, preparing the people of the country for the betterment of the country. Like some constructive work, you know, mass education, like uh, women empowerment, like uh, removal of untouchability and finally unity among the Hindu and Muslims. So preparing a better country. Okay, that's the part of the constructive work. So this is the part of the constructive work. Then once again, from here the movement will start. Then once again the constructive work. So the Gandhian style is movement constructive work, movement constructive work. So one part of the Indian National Congress, there was a, they were in favor of the constructive work. What happened actually after the non-cooperation movement as well. Here the same thing happened after the civil disobedience movement. And other part was in favor of the entry to the central legislature. Okay, central legislature. So this people were called new shorajist because they had the same argument that we should take entry to the new uh, legislature and we should create deadlocks there when government will come up with some oppressive or repressive laws with respect to India. So they were in favor of the participation in the election. These people were called new shorajist. Who were these people? Eme Ansari, Asaf Ali, Bulawai Deshai, A. Shattamurti, B. C. Rai. B. C. Rai means Chief Minister of West Bengal. He was Chief Minister of West Bengal, Vidhan Chandra Rai. So remember the name of this uh, uh, people because uh, they were new shortages and they can ask you the MCQs from here. Now let's come to the detailed provision of the Government of India Act 1935. What is the main subject of uh, today's class? So Government of India Act 1935. So I have be, uh, made a diagram here. So you can understand it better with the help of this diagram. And I have designed the Government of India Act very scientifically. Whenever you will go through any act, because there are so many legislations from 1773 onwards that regulating act was passed in the year 1773 and there are so many re regulation, uh, legislations. If you want to remember it properly, you have to design it very scientifically. Eh? Otherwise, you know, you will confuse the things. So that's how. Start with this. This particular line. So according to the Government of India Act, it was decided or the one of the most important provision or the most important provision of the government of India Act was creation of all India Federation. Okay, creation of all India Federation. So first focus on this particular word all India. What is meant by all India? According to the government of India Act, all India means British India and the princely states. So the all India Federation will be formed and all India means British India and princely states. Now let us focus on the second term that is federation. What is meant by federation? All you know who have all you have gone through polity. Federation or federal structure means distribution of power in between center and state. Okay, or separation of power between center and state. When the lawmaking powers are uh, distributed between central government and state government in accordance with the constitution, then that kind of polity or that kind of system would be called federal system. So here the federation, all India federation. Now federation here the same thing happens. See this box. So here also distribution of power between center and state. So for the distribution of lawmaking power between central, central and center and states, four different lists were prepared. The first list was federal list. That was the list for the central government. Okay, federal list are the, is the list of those subjects on which the central government will make law. Next come to the provincial list on which the state government will make laws. Next concurrent list on which 
both center and state will make laws and there were residual powers this residual power was vested to the viceroy okay so we are coming with when you will go through government of india act 1935 you come up with this particular sentence creation of all india federation that's the one thing if you remember this you will be able to remember the whole government of india act how creation of all india federation what is all india british india and princely states now federation federation means all you know that distribution of power between center and state here the same thing happened four different lists were prepared on which uh, central government or state government will make laws for the central government it was federal list for the provincial government at that time it was provincial government now it is state government provincial government the same thing actually provincial government will make laws that is provincial list and finally concurrent list on which both will make law and finally that residual power which was vested on the governor now let's come to this distribution of power on cent uh, between center and state let's see how state was at that time you know the most important thing about the government of india 1935 was provincial autonomy was given provincial autonomy you know most of the departments were given to the ministers okay most of the important departments were given to the ministers so provincial autonomy was introduced through through this government of india act 1935 next important thing is directive was abolished all you can remember 1990 through this montego chips port act this directive system was introduced directive system means all the law making subjects would be divided into two parts one was reserve and other was transferred all you know transferred this reserve subject was under the control of the governor you can just see the my previous video there i have discussed it and transfer subject will be under the control of the ministers okay so here this directive system was abolished through this government of india act directive system in the state or provinces was abolished because through this 1919 montego chips port act directive system was introduced in the provinces and through this government of india act 1935 directive system in the provinces was abolished next governor was the head of the executive and head of the state okay and there was a council of minister to advise the governor clear there was a council of minister to advise the governor but the problem was you know provincial autonomy was given directive was abolished governor was the head of the executive and there was a responsible ministry to uh, advise the governor but the problem was special powers were given to the governors you know governors could come up with the vetoes whenever government would, governor would not like any of the laws which was passed by the council of minister government could uh, used to give the governor could used to give veto so governor had this power to give veto so special power of the governor even governor if the governor wanted governor can dismiss the ministry also so you can understand that this is so many thing but really an eyewash okay i wish you are telling so many things you will get this you will get this you will get this and finally you were saying condition applied okay so you can understand that in case of the provincial autonomy what was happening what kind of provincial autonomy was it finally let's see this direct direct was abolished in the state or provinces now we will see how the centers were at that time in center the direct system was introduced okay so somehow british liked this direct very much so they have you know abolished direct in the provinces and they have come up with the direct in the centers so direct means division of the law making powers into two part uh, category that is reserve category and transferred category now reserve category was under the control of governor general because okay so reserve category consisted of defense ecclesiastical affairs means charge related external affairs praise police taxation justice power resources tribal affairs that means the most important things were under the reserve subject and the less important things less important things in the sense i am telling you that in the eye of the british government what they felt that less important for them like education health these were under the hand of the ministry okay so that's how direct system was introduced in the center and under the directive system there were two different list reserve list and transfer list reserve list was under the control of the governor general the other points of the government of india act 1935 if we see the bicameral legislature in the center was introduced okay and in some provinces also bicameral legislature was introduced like bombay
Bengal, Madras, Bihar, Assam, and United Provinces. A federal court was introduced or a federal court was established. Why the federal court here? Federal court in Delhi was established. The reason was already we have seen that All India Federation has been created. So federation means what is the meaning of federation? Federation means distribution of power in between center and state. If any kind of disputes take place between center on center and state with respect to this power sharing or power distribution, in that case, this federal court will come into the scene and they will look into the matter. Okay, so federal court was uh, for the resolution of the disputes between provinces and the center. Okay, with respect to this power sharing, and finally. The act provided for the establishment of the Reserve Bank. Okay, so these are the other provisions of the Government of India Act 1935. One more important thing you can ask me that, sir, who were eligible to be elected at that time or who used to cast their vote? So at that time, you know, this uh, the uh, percentage of elector or electors that was increased 14% of our populations were eligible to cast their votes. And on the basis of two important parameters, the parameters, you know, one is education and other parameters were, other, other parameter was wealth. So these were two important parameters on the basis of this, basically 14% of our population was eligible to cast or 14% of our population was eligible to cast their votes. So that's how the Government of India Act, in the next class we would see that what was the reaction of the Indian National Congress and different political parties with respect to this government of India Act. So one last thing I just want to tell you and I would end this class here. The government of India Act. So you have to remember the government of India Act by remembering a single line. The first important line, line is creation of All India Federation. And now you would focus All India and Federation. All India means British India and princely state. Now Federation, Federation means where Federation means that kind of polity where the distribution of power take place in between center and state. Here also four different lists were prepared okay, for distribution of the lobbying powers between center and provinces. Already you have seen this four different list and finally center and state. That means how the center was look like, how the state was. State was in case of state provincial autonomy was given. There was a ministry. Governor was the head of the executive and governor was the head of the state and there was a ministry to advise the governor but the governor had the special powers government governor had the power to apply veto absolute veto obviously and governor had also the power to dismiss the ministry as well so that was basically an i was and the most important thing about the provincial legislature that was abolished in uh, in the provinces and that diet was introduced in the center and all you have seen that what kind of changes took place in the center and 14% of our population was the electors at that time. So that's how we ended today's class, the Government of India Act 1935. I hope you have understood. We will come up with a new uh, conceptual video in the next session. Up till then, stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you very much. Subscribe, like and share our videos. Thank you very much.